Tonight, we bid farewell to Professor and Mrs. Engelsma, who fly back to America tomorrow. And it may well be that tonight is the last professor will preach or lecture in the British Isles, or the last time that they're over here, though we can hope. And so on this occasion, it's entirely fitting that we express our gratitude to the Engelsmas. And we also do this so that those of you who are relatively new to us will understand the immense service, something of it, that they have given us over the years. Now, unfortunately, tonight we have nothing to present to the Engelsmas. That was done at the BRF conference at the end of it, so we're not doing that. We also have no tea upstairs afterwards because, though it did occur to the council, we didn't have the heart to ask the ladies in the church to do it two weeks in a row, and various ones helped with catering before and after the conference and one staying in your houses. Just to let you know that the council sometimes does have mercy. Mercy. Now, since the British Reformed Fellowship Conference ended just over a week ago, I thought we would begin there. Professor Engels must spoke at the very first conference of the BRF in 1990 and at the last conference in 2022. And all the conferences in between, and I think that he, Ivan and Lily Reed and Brian Crossett are the only ever presents who have been at all 16 biennial conferences. I think that's, I think that's right. We have at various venues, two of them were in Scotland, including Gartmore. That was a great venue. The price has doubled and we'll probably never go back there again. Three of them were in England, including Ashburnham, near the Battle of Hastings. Four of them were in Wales, North Wales, Central Wales, South Wales, and the rest were in Northern Ireland, at Castle Welm, Lorne House in Bangor, and in County Fermanagh by the Lakes. Professor Engelsma, with other speakers, has addressed some lovely themes for the BRF over the years, the last things, assurance of salvation, the work of the Holy Spirit, and my personal favorite, union with Christ amongst them. Books have arisen out of these conferences. Seven already have been published, including Be Ye Holy, Keeping God's Covenant, and The Five Points of Calvinism, which is Colum's favorite, for good reasons. Some of these books have been translated in part, many chapters in many languages, and some have been translated in their entirety into Russian, Indonesian, and Polish. And the Polish translation, if, if you're interested, you can go online and you can listen to the whole thing in Polish on audio on our website. And... Marcin uh, will soon have his second BRF book translated into Polish at the rate he is going. And the next up book is Union with Christ. In connection with these BRF conferences, Professor Engelsma gave several author interviews, including of one of his books, Federal Vision, Heresy at the Root, which is one of the most watched videos on our church's YouTube pages. He has written a number of articles which have been published in the British Reform Journal, and we have three or four which Sam Watterson will be feeding into the BRJs in the future, Lord willing. And he has given unwavering support for the BRF over the last several decades. But Professor Engels must visits to the CPRC precede even the first BRF conference by six years. And now we go back almost 38 years to October 1984. 
I'm told, because I wasn't around then, at least not as a Christian in this church, I was born then, in case you're wondering, he and Prof Henkel were the first in the PRC to come to Northern Ireland in October 1984. They gave speeches in Larne and preached there, where was the Bible Presbyterian Church, an earlier manifestation of the CPRC. The subject is, was God's covenant. And Ivan Reed said the speeches were tremendous, the best he'd ever heard. And earlier, Brian mentioned to me that they brought pamphlets with them, including Herman Hooksema's Jesus, Savior, and the Evil of Hawking Him, which Brian says he wasn't sure he agreed with at the time, but couldn't beat the biblical logic and then grasped it. I think the calendars also, October 1984, were you around then, Mrs. Calendar? You were there. Good. Linda, you too? No? Okay. <laughs> Too young. <laughs> Too young. Now, over the last almost four decades, Prof. Engelsma has been immense of immense help to our church. Some highlights or lowlights in this include a grievous split that we endured 20 years ago when he gave us superb advice and all we had to do was do what we were told and things would go well. And we did what we were told and we got out the other side he was here with Prof. Engelsma, Prof. Henko, at the dedication of this church building in the summer of 2010 and pulled the little, little cord that opened up the curtains that were in front of the plaque, which you can see in the narthex or foyer between the doors into the kitchen and the little Bible study room. He also helped us with an analysis of the recent controversy in America. Some other ways in which the professor has assisted us, he has given, as many of you will know, a couple of mini conferences in this building. The 500th anniversary of the Reformation in 2017, 1517, 2017, we had him to give a number of fine speeches on Martin Luther and John Calvin and justification by faith alone. And then he accepted our call to come over and help us celebrate the 400th anniversary of the Synod and Canons of Dort in 2019, before some of you knew us. Even our bookstore has benefited from his ministry. I worked it out earlier today that about a quarter of our books are either authored or edited by Prof. Engelsma. And he has even helped me in some of my summer holidays by bringing some of his latest books. And then I can read them when I'm out camping and that greatly enriches your experience. And he has penned over one-fifth of our pamphlets. So that's over 20%, including The Covenant of God and the Children of Believers, which I have reread many times, and Remembering the Lord's Day. We have on our website audios of his debate on common grace, various lectures, some of which I mentioned earlier, interviews, including Iron Sharpens Iron Radio, and Mary has another audio that she's going to put on our website in the days ahead, whenever she can see her way clear to that, as well as some sermons. And you may be surprised to know, and I think it may even be a surprise to Prof. Engelsma, at least he may have forgotten it, Professor has helped us even with material for the back of our bulletins. So it's not just Brian D. Dykstra. He wrote scores of emails to European forums on justification and on church membership. And some of you will remember that they then went on the back of the bulletins and were read, read widely. Speaking more personally... I owe a great debt to Professor Engelsma because he was one of my seminary professors in Grand Rapids and his classes on dogmatics were the highlight of the week for us as seminarians and I can remember once in the innocence of my heart asking him, Professor, you've got this so much material and it's hard to get us finished. 
Couldn't we have three classes a week instead of two? And I hardly got the sentence finished. No, no, and I don't understand quite why, but I think the TSC, the Theological School Committee, were heavy on that one. One of the highlights of the highlights, too, was his fielding questions. And there were some students from other seminaries who didn't actually agree with the Protestant Reformed Churches, and they'd ask difficult questions, and he always had an answer for them, and we as the students especially liked that, too. I would sit beside Prof. Engelsma at lunchtime, the faculty and the students would have their, their snacks, and then I would ask Prof. Engelsma so many questions that eventually I just sat down beside him. I don't know what the form was, but as a foreigner, I, I think I was allowed to get away with it. And then some of you can imagine, he was bombarded with questions because I always find Professor Engelsma so clear and easy to follow and understand. I recall one instance when he wrote a particularly controversial editorial in the Standard Bearer. This is about 25 years ago, in which he was disagreeing sharply with post-millennial reconstructionism. And I was aware of some problems in our own congregation, which resulted actually in the split that I mentioned earlier. And I, for a moment, doubted I wondered if he could sustain his point. I thought he had gone too far. So I read the standard bearer, came into seminary that morning and went straight to his office and knocked the door first. And I said to him, Professor, what about this? How do you answer this? Do you think you've pushed the boat here? Can you sustain this point? And then he explained and I began to calm down a bit and I realized that yes, he sounds such an idiot saying this today. Yes, he knew what he was talking about. And then I, oh good, good. And then I went to walk out through the door and he said to me, said to me, aren't you going to say good morning to me? <laughs> In closing, what I and we have gained from his visits over the last four decades is a man who knows and loves the biblical and reformed faith, and for many of us, Professor Engelsma just embodied it, and embodies it, present tense. He has given to us unfailing encouragement. One of the most touching things was that he has always been thrilled with developments here that were good, and sympathized when things went, went ill. And so... He's not only been a great gift to the Protestant Reformed Churches, but also to us. But Professor Engelsman, we did not come here tonight to bury you. We, we hope you have many more years of service in this world and that God continues to give you strength for your work and in writing books and many other things besides. And when Mary and I next are in Grand Rapids, even if you're not able to make it over here, we hope to visit you. And Mrs. Engelsma has said that she's going to make us another lovely dinner, which is always, always good. So, Professor Engelsma, thank you. You may have noticed tonight that I got tired at the end. Now I know why. This church and fellowship wore me out <laughs> over the years. In reality, when I look out upon this congregation as I did tonight and do now, I see a wonder. It's especially wonderful in that the congregation has in the past gone through struggles and disappointments when the very existence of the church was at stake. It's a wonder that there is a congregation of Reformed believers and their children at all, as there is here. It's a wonder that God has preserved, enlarged, and now protects this church. But I remind you that the warfare is not over. You are the kingdom of Christ in the midst of a hostile kingdom. 
The Satan who saw his advantage in Judas Iscariot has his eye on you. Will be working to destroy you. Be vigilant. And be assured that Christ is on the throne as the captain of your host in your warfare. Tonight, the close fellowship and cooperation of my wife and myself with you evidently comes to an end. Our fellowship until now has been blessed. A great blessing for me. This is one of the most rewarding act activities in my ministry that I have enjoyed. It only remains that we say goodbye, as I do now, and that we pray for God's continued blessing upon us all. Let us pray. Our Father, we thank Thee for what Thou hast done in the gathering, preserving, and saving of Thy Church in this body of believers and their children. It has been Thy work, Thou hast answered our prayers, Thou hast blessed our labors, imperfect as they were, so that now this congregation has come out to a good place. Add to the Church such as should be saved, Bless the ministry of the office bearers. Surround us with thy mercies and grant that we may persevere to the very end when the Lord returns and we have a gracious reward upon our labors. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>